Hello and welcome. This is actually take two of our Brain and Balance seminar. We hosted at the gym a week ago. We had some uh, audio issues, and so here we are re-recording uh, just to uh, make sure that you can understand and get the information you wanted. So uh, first and foremost, I want to give you a quick overview of the three things we hope to accomplish in this video. Uh, first and foremost, we want to explain why brain health and balance matters. Uh, and why you should care. Second thing we want to do is clear up some common myths and mistakes and uh, really just a lot of misunderstandings that uh, people have around those two topics. Uh, third, we want to talk, and this is most important, about you know some actual strategies we can use to improve both brain health and balance and like what can we actually do because that's that's what matters. Uh, the intent here was not to just nerd out and share a bunch of studies and research and while there's nothing wrong with that, uh, again, the focus here is I want people to walk away and actually say like, okay, I get it. I know what I should actually be doing. And then in our next video, we'll actually put into practice and like walk through some, some specific examples. We've got a ton of different fitness levels uh, that we can modify things for. And again, in our next video, we, we really dive deep into that. So now uh, let's get started. So first and foremost, you know, why does this matter? So a question I asked uh, people at the seminar was, you know, what, according to the CDC, how many people over the age of 65 do you think fall each year? And uh, the, the guesses were all over the place, uh, but unfortunately it is a lot. More than one, uh, one in four adults over 65 fall each year. It's almost one in three, so um, that's that's pretty scary if you think about it. Uh, just in 2018 alone, over three million seniors uh, visited emergency rooms for fall-related injuries. Uh, and if you're more of a numbers person, money type person, um, that resulted in 50 billion in costs. So a lot of money, unfortunately, uh, goes into this. So. Uh, probably even more of a depressing stat. I promise, don't worry. Things are going to get better. 20% uh, of hip fractures are fatal within one year. Yeah, 20% are fatal. That's, uh, that's not good. Of the remaining 80%, over half of those will never return to full function. So basically, um, fewer than 4 out of 10 people uh, who fall and fracture their hip will be able to go back to doing the things they love to do. So when you when you think about that, again, that's uh, that's just, uh, it's not good. Um, so don't worry, it's not all bad news. Um, that's, you know, we're, we're getting past the doom and gloom here quick, getting it out of the way. Uh, the upside is exercise, according to the uh, American Medical Association, is the number one way to prevent falls. Um, and a lot of that has to do more than anything due to a lack of muscle mass is the one of the main reasons that people fall. So therefore, exercise helps with muscle mass and, uh, and a ton of other stuff. But anyway, exercise uh, is the number one way to help prevent falls. So the good thing is uh, there's things that can be done. So when we're talking specific to cognitive function and brain health, uh, according to the New England Journal of Medicine, exercise is one of the best ways to uh, improve that and uh, keep that brain firing on all cylinders. So again, um, why this matters, you know, here's some of the numbers right here. There's a ton of other stuff, but my, my goal wasn't to uh, go crazy for 30 minutes and just talk about like all the bad things that could possibly happen. So again, just wanted to touch on a few of the bigger pieces. So uh, moving on, common myths and mistakes. Uh, with both brain and uh, balance work. Uh, the first and foremost is I can't make improvements at my age. I hear this all the time with people when, the, when we talk about like uh, brain health and then also when we talk about balance. And a lot of folks think, oh, well, you know, I'm too old. I can't make improvements. And that's just simply not true. Again, the, uh, I just touched on there was a recent New England Journal of Medicine article uh, that specifically talked about uh, improving uh, cognitive function and uh, the numbers actually were really interesting and uh, it doesn't decline there as long as we're taking steps 
to stay active and, and exercise and doing the things we need to do, um, it, the brain does not actually decline as much as uh, a lot of people would think they do. So uh, next, a lot of people, again, specific to brain health, think like, oh, I just need to do uh, crossword puzzles, play tic-tac-toe, do things to just stimulate the mind. And don't get me wrong, nothing wrong with that. Um, that that's, that's great. It's a great first step. Uh, but that's not really going to get you to the promised land. That's not going to really help you perform at an optimal level. So another big myth, um, and, th and this is, or I would say more of a mistake, and this um, has more to do with balance training, and that's on focusing on two extremes. So what I mean by that is the first one being balancing on uh, one leg and like only doing that. And, and so for example, one of the things when we talk about um, fitting this stuff into like just your everyday life, it would say, hey, here's a simple way to, you know, kind of work on your balance a little bit would be to just uh, when you're brushing your teeth, you know, hopefully you do that, um, you know, stand on one leg for a minute and then the other leg for a minute and then at night do it again. Um, uh, you know, and so that's a lot of people think, well, you know, to work on my balance, I just need to stand on one leg. And again, it's a great start. Uh, but when you think about fall prevention and when people fall, people fall when they're in motion, when they're moving around. Very rarely does someone just fall standing there, standing still. So uh, falls happen with motion, with movement, and therefore we need to train and we need to practice uh, balancing uh, with movement. And again, we'll, we'll get more specifics into that later, but... That's just one extreme is this idea is like, oh, even though I'm standing, you know, as long as I'm standing still, as long as I'm on one leg, I'm, I'm getting better. Again, it's not the, it's not nothing wrong with it, but that's not going to, that alone is not going to help you see the types of improvements that most people are wanting to see. The other extreme is making everything unstable. So this is uh, thanks to the internet. We see this all the time. People standing on like the, the big round stability balls or the half, what they call BOSU balls, um, and people stand on all these unstable surfaces. And again, is there a place for a lot of that stuff? Yes, uh, but a lot of people tend to take it to an extreme and just think, oh, well, everything needs to be done on an unstable surface. And according to the research, that's just simply not true. So like most things in life, the answer lies somewhere in the middle. So again, we don't want to only stand on one leg at the same time, we don't want to do all kinds of crazy stuff to where we're, you know, dancing all over the place on, on like BOSU balls and stability balls and, and doing, uh, again, all kinds of crazy stuff. So next, we, uh, one of the biggest mistakes people make is ignoring strength and power. Again, what I said as far as the medical or uh, American Medical Association, uh, what exercise is the number one thing that you can do to help prevent falls. And uh, the reason has a lot to do with uh, strength training. And so a lot of the times when people fall, it has to do simply with the lack of strength. They don't have the strength or stability to control their body and to help prevent those falls when they start to get a little off balance. Uh, power, and when people think of power, I'm not talking about like jumping up on seven foot tall boxes and like swinging a bunch of weights around. I'm just talking about moving quickly. So a power exercises could be um, working on like the agility ladder like we do at the gym. Uh, power exercises could be like slamming the ropes down. Power exercises like slamming uh, medicine balls down into the ground. All stuff that we do a ton of. And the reason we do it, a lot of people think, oh, well, we're just doing that to get my heart rate up so I can burn calories. And, and that, that's definitely part of it. But the reason we do so much of that is because it's one of the few ways to train for power, basically for you to train your body to move quickly, but do so with, with minimal risk. Uh, because again, if we're talking about like jumping up on tall boxes and doing things like that, the risk goes up significantly. So we want to be able to focus on moving fast, but doing it in a, in a way that uh, is also safe, because that's super important. So. Next, and the last thing worth mentioning, is not training in multiple directions. So we'll get more into the examples in our next video. But again, you want to train in all different directions. Um, it's better for both the brain and the balance. All right, so what exercises are best for improving brain health? Well, there's a lot of different things, but there's really three 
uh, buckets or categories that I primarily like to focus on. So the first one is contralateral exercises. Again, with all of these, don't sweat it. We're gonna get into more specific demonstrations here in our next video, but contralateral exercises. The idea here is working your right arm and left leg at this, that's a contralateral movement or left in your, working your left arm and right leg at the same time. So contralateral movements uh, really stimulate the brain because we're having to work both sides of the brain at the same time. So um, again, we're gonna get into more specifics, but I just wanted to explain kind of, uh, you know, our, our first category exercise that we're looking at. So the next one is high intensity exercises. This is also where, uh, where those like slamming medicine balls and ropes come in handy. By doing high intensity exercise, it elevates the heart rate, heart rate gets the blood pumping. Uh, there's a lot of good things that come from high intensity exercise and that will also help improve uh, your, your brain health. Now, do you need to do that every day? No but incorporating a little bit of high intensity exercise, forcing your heart rate to get up a couple times a week it has uh, definitely a lot of benefits. And then the third and final category is multi-directional exercises. Again, think of it as, you know, we, we tend to spend our lives just moving forward. In reality, we need to be moving uh, 365 degrees. We need to focus on moving forward, sideways, backwards, uh, all different directions. And again, we can do some of this stuff through different like uh, lunge variations where we're, we're going through different directions. Uh, the agility ladder, again, there's some other examples, but we'll dive into that uh, soon. So those are really the three primary buckets that we look for when it comes to improving your brain health. Now, when we're talking about balance, the three categories that we look at, uh, first and foremost is single leg functional exercises. So by that, you know, I mentioned earlier, okay, you know, standing on one leg and uh, again, there's nothing wrong with that. That definitely has a place, um, but that in and of itself, just standing there is not, uh, not going to do the trick. So single leg functional exercises. This is uh, why at the gym you'll see we do a ton of like one leg squats, one leg lunges, uh, just all kinds of different single leg type movements. And uh, the, this is one of the reasons why is because it's extremely effective for improving your balance. So next is strength and power exercises. And this is more of kind of a broad uh, category. This is, um, again, there's many, many options that you could focus on. Uh, but strength and power exercises, this goes back to the idea that if you want to improve your balance, you need to be strong. And so again, uh, working on balance does not mean just standing on one leg. So in general, we just, we need to be strong. We need to be, uh, we need to possess the power, the ability to move quickly as well. And then the third category uh, is again, multi-directional exercises, just like with the brain health movement. So uh, hopefully, you know, if you're, if you're seeing like, oh wow, some of this stuff seems similar for brain health and balance. There's an overlap here and that is absolutely true. So the reason, um, yeah, that's the reason behind why we combine these two topics into one seminar is because again, there's so much overlap between the things you need to do to improve your balance and the things you need to do to improve your brain health. So the multi-directional exercise, which we already discussed, and we're gonna get into more examples here, uh, in our next video, but again, those are those are the three categories of exercises that are best for improving your balance. So there you have it. Quick, you know, 14 minute summary right here, kind of explaining just higher level how what we look, what we're looking for, uh, what are some common myths, why this matters, and then again in our next video, we're gonna actually walk through some specific exercise demonstrations that will hopefully tie all this together. So thank you for watching.